class is now in session. I'm Professor Hockey, and today we'll be doing another Sharks play review. And today it is Rudolph's Balsers. Now, going from the top of the list to the bottom of the list, you may have figured out that I have Rudolph's Balsers as the third highest graded player for the San Jose Sharks this season. And you may wonder, does that mean I think Balsers was the third best Sharks player this season? And well, no, and this is as good of a time as any as to talk about my philosophy when it comes to grading players. So because of the massive differences of skills between certain players, not only on the Sharks, but just in the NHL as a whole, you cannot use the same exact rubric in grading players for, you know, Vander Kane as you do for someone like Rudolf Balsers or like a Noah Gregor. If Vander Kane were to come out in a season and get 40 points, I'd actually be rather disappointed and he'd probably end up with a rather low grade. If Noah Gregor were to come out and get a 40-point season, I'd be blown away by how he outperformed expectations and he'd probably get a pretty high grade. So in this case, Rudolf Balsers came in with pretty tempered expectations and outperformed them quite well, so much much so that he ended up being the third highest graded player, even if a player like, you know, uh, uh, let's just say Timo Meyer or something like that ended up, you know, objectively playing a better style of hockey this season. It's just that when you take into account the expectations, Balsers was a much higher grade than someone like Timo Meyer was. Now, Balsers came into this season kind of in, you know, weird situation. The Sharks once had Balsers in their system. He was a Sharks draft pick a few years ago in the 2015 draft, drafted uh, in the fifth round. And he had, you know, panned out to be a pretty solid player at the AHL level. But it seemed as though that was all he was going to end up being, just an AHL kind of player. One of those players who was too good for the AHL, but not good enough for the NHL. And in the end, he ended up getting traded in the Eric Carlson deal that sent uh, Eric Carlson from Ottawa to San Jose and sent multiple players and assets to the Ottawa Senators back. Among them, you know, Dylan DeMello, who was a solid sixth defenseman at the time for the Sharks, who ended up being a top four four defensemen for the Ottawa Senators, now the Winnipeg Jets. You know, Chris Tierney, who was a very solid third line center for the Sharks and played quite well with the Senators as well. Josh Norris, who at the time was the Sharks' top prospect. And while he ended up being seemingly a top line forward for the Ottawa Senators, at the time he was projected to at best be a second liner throughout his career. And then the fourth player sent, who was kind of an afterthought, was Rudolph's Balsers sent as that AHL move. But in the end, the Ottawa Senators gave him a try at the NHL level and he actually performed pretty good. But after a couple of years, the Senators could no longer really find a space for him on the main roster and decided to wave him. Now the Sharks, since they were near the bottom of the league this past season, had one of the first opportunities at jumping on to the waiver wire and they did so with Rudolph Spalsers bringing him back to the team that drafted him. And while he didn't play these first few games of the season, which was no surprise considering he was picked up so like very, very soon before the start of the season that he needed some time to get acclimated and everything like that. But once he finally made his way into the lineup, he played almost every single game remaining on the schedule for the San Jose Sharks, ending up with 41 games played which actually makes the math rather easy for you know panning things out for the 82 game season because that is exactly half of an 82 game season so 82 games played eight goals on the year which would have put him at 16 for a full season nine go nine assists which would have put him at 18 assists for a full season and 17 points which would have put him at 34 points for a full season those are about in line with what you would expect from a solid third line player and that's exactly what Balsers should end up being, at least going into the following season. But in this season, while he did start off on that third line, he actually managed to earn uh, Bob Booner's trust rather quickly and moved himself up in the lineup to the second and even at times first line playing with players like Logan Couture. And that's just how good Balsers was at times. He seemed to have all of the correct you know, intangibles to be able to play at a high level. He wasn't necessarily an extremely skilled player, which was why, you know, 34 points over an 82 game season ended up being the case for him. But, you know, he put himself in the right place. He had the right reads on the situation, so much so that as time went on, he wasn't just getting even strength ice time, but he ended up getting some power play ice time and even near the end of the season, getting some shorthanded ice time, which is very interesting to see for a player who was playing you know, their first season here with the Sharks, at the very least. Technically not his first 
not his rookie season because he did have that with the Senators a couple of years ago, but his first ever season with the Sharks. And when you consider how Bob Booner has treated other young players this season and in the past, that is very, very impressive. And so going into the next season, it seems as though Balser should end up being a third line player as the Sharks top six as, le as long as anything, uh, as long as nothing changes, obviously, during the offseason, which is technically possible. Their top six will probably end up being Hurdle, Couture, Meyer, LeBanc, Kane, as well as a sixth player being Alexander Barabanov. And Balser can end up on that third line. And that could be a fantastic position for him because I really do think he is a very solid third liner and he could potentially create some mismatches in that situation. I feel as though he could be better than a lot of other team around the NHL's third lines and third defensive pairings and it could kind of end up being like the third line that the Sharks had a couple of years ago when they were running Joe Thornton, Kevin LeBanc and Marcus Sorensen. That was a third line that was able to just completely body other third lines around the league and while Balsers will be kind of alone in that regard so it won't necessarily be similar as his line mates are likely to be players like you know, Gambrell, if he's not picked in the expansion draft, or Ryan Donato, if he is not picked in the expansion draft, then he is brought back. So not necessarily elite, elite talent with him, but I do think Balsers can absolutely lead a third line. And I also think that he can be very effective on the second power play, for instance. Moving on to plus minus, as I've pointed out many times in the four, before, the plus minus stat is not a very good stat, especially in single games. As you know, a player could go minus three and yet have not actually had that bad of a game, and a player could go plus three and actually had a pretty bad game for themselves. But when you average it out over a full season, you'll see that it actually ends up being a half decent stat. You'll notice that the first few players on my player review list have actually been near the top of the Sharks in terms of plus minus. Evander Kane with his minus one. And Mario Ferraro with his best plus minus out of all the Sharks defensemen. Rudolph Balsers with a similar one here at minus six. And it just goes to show that when you average it out over a full season, things kind of balance itself out. And it shows who was, you know, more inclined to play a bit of a defensive game, who was more inclined to play more in the offensive zone for themselves. And Rudolph Balsers was among those players. And when we take a look at ice time, 14 minutes, 43 seconds, just about in line with what you would expect from a solid third liner especially when you consider the fact that early on in his season this year he was playing not a ton of ice time right his just his second game on the year he ended up getting I believe somewhere around eight and a half minutes and yet near the end of the season he played a season that high 19 and a half minutes in one of those games against the Colorado Avalanche so there was a massive evolution from the start of the season for Rudolph Spalsers to the end of the season and he could be a very effective forward for the San Jose Sharks moving into the future now, when it comes to grading, I don't think he's anywhere near the level of where Vander Kane was this season with his A, and I don't think he's there at Mario Ferraro's A-, minus. but he is here leading the pack with a solid B+, where he outperformed expectations rather well. Class dismissed.